Japanese researchers conduct a simulation of an atomic bomb blast. At 11.02 a.m. on August 9, 1945, an atomic bomb exploded above the city of Nagasaki in southwestern Japan. It unleashed radiation, intense heat rays, and a blast force that caused massive, instantaneous destruction. That year alone, 70,000 people died. About half of the deaths are attributed to the blast itself. Many decades later, however, the exact characteristics of the explosion that ended so many lives were still unknown. Then, in 2013, new clues emerged. Photographs and a map that showed the havoc wreaked by the atomic bombing. A fallen smokestack. Toppled trees. Drawn on the map are donut-shaped red bands showing the intensity of damage. They indicated there was greater destruction away from the center of the blast. The area marked in darkest red is about 500 meters from ground zero. Standing there at the time was a reinforced concrete building. It was the Shiroyama Primary School. One hundred thirty-eight people, including teachers and students, lost their lives here. How did the nuclear blast kill those inside the building? The simulation indicated the blast penetrated the structure in just one-tenth of a second. A violent shockwave spread from the point of detonation at 503 meters above ground. The wall of pressure expanded rapidly outward at ground level. This horizontal shockwave is what destroyed Nagasaki. It's called a mock stem. The mock stem expands rapidly. The blast pressure moving along the ground intensifies. Buildings 500 meters away from ground zero are extremely vulnerable to this shock wave. It also emerged that the United States had precisely calculated the mock stem's destructive power and used it intentionally to multiply damage. These documents show what was discussed in secret meetings four months before the atomic bombing. Correlate the data on the size of the bomb burst, the amount of damage expected, and the ultimate distance at which people can be killed. They talk about the radiation very small. Um, in general, they did not speak about radiation as a major effect. They consider the blast effect to be the primary effect. And that was just because they were measuring success in how many square miles of the city were destroyed. Nearly 70 years ago, 
in 1945, a mock stem wave flattened Nagasaki. We'll uncover the mechanism of the atomic blast that destroyed the city. Shiroyama Elementary School today. Every morning, students bow before entering the building. It's a long-held custom in this place that was devastated by an atomic blast in 1945. Near the front gate stands a preserved building. This was part of the Shiroyama Primary School. The building was renovated after World War II, but its interior retains some scars from the bombing. <laughs> The pressure and extreme heat broke iron window frames. Wooden sections were scorched black. This is what Shiroyama Primary School looked like before the bombing. The building had two wings, south and north. That day, children were told to stay home. The people in the north wing were mostly teachers. The South Wing was used as an office by Mitsubishi Arms Factory, and employees and mobilized students were at work there. The instant the atomic bomb exploded over Nagasaki, a massive blast struck the school building. 138 people were killed. Only 20 survived. Why did so many people die, even though they were inside a solid, reinforced concrete structure? Not much has been revealed about exactly what happened. We found someone who was at the school and miraculously survived the bombing. Hiroko Kanaya is 86 years old. She was then 17. After graduating from high school, she had started working for Mitsubishi Arms Factory. Her life was spared that day because she happened to be inside an air raid shelter on the school grounds, helping to dig it out. She also says a huge shock wave came blasting into the shelter. I heard this tremendous noise and I was flung off my feet, probably toward the back of the shelter. Everything went black. It suddenly dawned on me that I might be buried alive. I remember screaming, Dad, Mom, help me. I walked to about here. After Kanaya dragged herself out of the shelter, she saw the school building destroyed by the bomb and her colleagues crying for help. 
Everything looked completely different. All the glass was gone. It was like a war zone with everything incinerated. And all the people had terrible injuries. Their clothing was in shreds, stained red with blood. They'd stagger out here and collapse. Some were crawling on their stomachs. It was a scene from hell. The atomic bomb dropped on Nagasaki was nicknamed Fat Man. It was 30% more powerful than the one used on Hiroshima. About half of the deaths immediately following its detonation were due to the explosion. Many people were killed by the force of the blast wave or by structures collapsing around them. In Nagasaki, the explosive blast leveled reinforced concrete buildings across an area 10 times wider than in Hiroshima. Eleven days later, a prominent scientist came to the city to investigate the effects of the blast. Tetsuya Fujita was a leading meteorologist and tornado researcher. He devised the Fujita, or F-scale, for measuring the intensity of tornadoes. In 2013, some materials were found among Fujita's belongings. They would help scientists understand the destructive mechanism of the blast from an atomic bomb. They included 34 photographs. The pictures were apparently taken to document the effects of shock waves. A map representing the damage shown in the photos also surfaced. The darker the color, the stronger the destructive effects of the blast. The darkest red circle represents a zone some 500 meters from ground zero. That's where Shiroyama Primary School was located. Why did areas away from the center of the blast suffer more damage? Shotaro Okuno is a curator at the Nagasaki Atomic Bomb Museum. Something in one of the photos caught his attention. The condition of trees near Shiroyama School. The trunks of trees closer to ground zero, at a distance of around 400 meters, are still standing firmly rooted in the earth. But farther away, at about 500 meters from ground zero, all the trees are toppled from their roots. The blast first expanded downward from above, and then the shock front traveled sideways. It was probably followed by extremely violent blast winds moving horizontally. The Fujita photographs were taken about two weeks after the bombing. The pictures suggest the bomb in Nagasaki generated a powerful horizontal blast. Why was it more intense about 500 meters away from ground zero? At NHK's request, Researchers at Kumamoto University near Nagasaki conducted a test on the effects of the atomic explosion. They simulated the blast at one six hundredth of its original scale and analyzed the pressure a structure would have been subjected to. Experts familiar with blast damage oversaw the simulation. We focused on the section of Shiroyama School that suffered the worst damage, the South Wing. When the bomb was dropped over Nagasaki, 
About 100 people were working on the second and third floors at the South Wing, where Mitsubishi Arms Factory had an office. We built a model of part of the South Wing and placed it in a position corresponding to 500 meters from ground zero. Then, we set an explosive at a height equivalent to 503 meters above ground where the burst occurred. A high-speed camera was used to record how the structure blew apart. You can see the blast pressing one of the walls sharply inward, right before it's destroyed. The maximum pressure applied to the model was 760 kilopascals, or 76 tons per square meter. So about 8,400 tons of force was pressing against the exterior wall of the school's south wing. The back wall on the other side was also demolished in a certain characteristic way. As the blast wave hits the structure, the front side wall starts to break apart first. At this moment, the back wall is still there. Roughly 1 50th of a second after the front wall begins to shatter, the back wall is destroyed, as if blown out from within. A pressure wave moving horizontally smashes into the front and hurtles through to the back wall. The shock wave traveling along the ground tore apart what we placed at a distance equivalent to 500 meters. The blast pressure grew extremely powerful there, and that's what added greatly to the damage. The horizontal blast pressure intensified around 500 meters from ground zero. We filmed that movement using a special device that can detect invisible flows of air. Here's how the blast expands from the center of the explosion. When the blast wave strikes the Earth, it is reflected upward to form a second, dome-shaped shock wave. Let's focus on the area where the two waves meet. One shock wave comes from above, as it expands from the core of the explosion. The other is reflected off the ground. The two blast waves then merge, more than doubling their individual pressure, and continue expanding in a horizontal direction. The combined wave grows in height and strength as it moves along the ground. This is the shock wave, known as the Mach stem. We used a very small amount of explosives, but something much bigger like an atomic bomb or a huge amount of explosives or explosion would have generated the same kind of shock wave movement. The result of our experiment is in line with what happened in Nagasaki 
where mock reflection occurred at a short distance from ground zero and caused severe damage farther away. Here's a simulation of how the mock stem struck the city of Nagasaki. The atomic bomb exploded in the air, causing the blast to spread like an inflating ball. The blast reflected off the ground, creating a second shock wave that expanded in the shape of a dome. The two waves fused, creating a mock front that spread in a concentric pattern and caused devastation in the red-colored area. In Nagasaki, the mock stem occurred at about 300 meters from ground zero. Its destructive power reached its zenith at around 500 meters. This is how the Shiroyama Primary School was destroyed. The bomb exploded at 11.02 a.m. 0.9 seconds later, the mock stem reached the school building. With a force exceeding 8,000 tons, it moved horizontally into the south wing wall and went through the back wall in just one-tenth of a second. The structure's framework remained standing, but of the 100 people inside at the time, 96 were killed instantly. What was happening inside the school building when the mock stem hit? It turns out, someone kept a record. Hideo Arakawa was the school's vice principal. He was one of the 20 people who survived. This is the the after the war, and until he died at age 87, Arakawa visited survivors and bereaved family members to compile a record of what happened at the school on that day. Among his documents were notes from interviews he conducted with survivors and relatives of victims. In here were entries about the school's south wing. The blast blew away the windows, scattering shards of glass like sharp knives. The roof and the ceiling collapsed, and the thick plaster crumbled. As a result, many people died from the initial blast, or burned to death. When people began clearing debris at the school, they found a number of bodies among broken pieces of concrete. The classroom windows at Shiroyama School had grid-like frames with many panes of glass. The glass shattered out of the frames at a speed of 10 meters per second, lacerating the people inside. The walls of the classrooms were torn apart. The concrete ceiling collapsed. The violent force of the mock stem turned the building fixtures into weapons of destruction, one after another. Many bodies were damaged beyond recognition.
the dead were cremated on the school grounds. Their families were left uninformed of their fate. When the United States dropped the atomic bomb, did they know how destructive the force of its mock stem would be? The U.S. National Archives keep classified documents from that period. These are meeting minutes of the Target Committee convened in April 1945 to choose atomic bomb candidate cities in Japan. The mock stem turns out to have been discussed extensively by the committee. Committee Chairman Brigadier General Thomas Farrell instructed members to calculate the blast effect of the mock stem in advance. Correlate the size of the bomb burst, the amount of damage expected, and the ultimate distance at which people will be killed. Around that time, the U.S. was developing a new atomic bomb that could produce an enhanced mock stem. This is the plutonium bomb that would later be dropped on Nagasaki. If you come in. Alex Wellerstein researches U.S. nuclear war technology and strategy. He says maximizing the effect of the mock stem was one of the goals of the target committee. They talk about the radiation very small. Um, in general, they did not speak about radiation as a major effect. They didn't think it was going to be that important. They consider the blast effect to be the primary effect. It is a very destructive effect. Um, at very high pressures, it doesn't really matter what the other effects are. You'll destroy almost everything. Um, it causes a lot of damage. To achieve the most effective destruction from the mock stem, Washington intensively studied the optimum height at which to detonate the bomb. It takes five pounds per square inch of pressure to totally destroy a house. Altitude of detonation is the key to delivering this level of force. For example, when a bomb is exploded at a height of 1,000 meters, the mock stem is generated far from ground zero. The blast pressure falls short of 5 psi. At 100 meters, on the other hand, the mock stem emerges near the blast center. But the area receiving blast pressure over 5 psi is limited to 1.4 kilometers in radius. As a result of its extensive calculations, the U.S. decided to detonate the atomic bomb at an altitude of 503 meters above Nagasaki. Researchers figure the subsequent mock stem exceeding 5 psi in pressure reached as far as 1.7 kilometers from ground zero. And so you can pick what pressure range it is. The pressure range they picked is the one that most destroys civilian light structures. Some of it was spread out into very small, um, they called cottage industries, where it was just a family who would work on one small part for an airplane. And so they didn't really consider there to be a big uh, dividing line between civilian and military. This is Nagasaki a little more than a month after the bombing. 
U.S. military personnel had landed and begun on-site inspections to determine the effects of the bomb. Mobilizing Japanese physicians and scientists, the U.S. investigators checked buildings and interviewed survivors in detail. We found a report from the survey. The dead were recorded on floor plans from the Shiroyama Primary School. Black circles indicate instantaneous deaths. Half circles mean the victims died later. The symbols are numbered. For each one, a separate list gives a name and cause of death. Number 33 is Aiko Tanaka, aged 22. Cause of death, blast. Number seven, Wayata Fujiwara, aged 30, crushed. Number 34, Sachiko Yamazaki, aged 20, her corpse could not be distinguished. What heights of detonation produce what degrees of damage? The data collected in Nagasaki were fed into ensuing U.S. nuclear weapons development programs. Unlike Hiroshima, there was not as much fire damage in Nagasaki, and so we could isolate the blast damage much easier than we could in Hiroshima. They used calculations to determine what the air blast pressure was for each of these different buildings at different distances, and then were able to correlate the damage with the pressure level. Yeah, it was helpful in many ways. Uh, you know, we have some individual houses but how do you, you can't construct an entire city. The massive mock stem wave from the Nagasaki bomb magnified the damage to the city by amplifying the blast pressure, depending on the shape of the buildings. In a far corner on the first floor of the school was the principal's office. Of the five teachers holding a meeting here, four died. How did the destructive force of the blast reach this room? Based on a host of data, we had researchers simulate the blast pressure on the school building. Here, different colors show changes in pressure every one five hundredth of a second. 0 0.9 second after the detonation, the shock wave spreading from the blast center at 503 meters above the ground reaches the building's third floor. What's approaching from the front is the mock stem traveling sideways on the ground. It hits the north wing 0.04 seconds later. In the simulation, the entire wall turns red, indicating severe blast pressure. At this moment, the pressure on the wall measures about 12,000 tons. Here's a cross-section of the building. The instant the mock stem hits the building, a series of pressure waves follow, charging the structure one after another.
The mock stem reaching the north wing forces its way through the windows instead of destroying the walls. In 0.1 second, it hits the end of the building and bounces off the wall. The wall's color changes to red, indicating immense pressure. The reflected blast is joined by another coming from the back, so it's strengthened before it bursts into the principal's office. By this time, the mock stem has also entered the courtyard. Having reached a dead end, the shock wave rolls up the building wall, exerting tremendous pressure on surrounding surfaces. The principal's office also faced the courtyard. So it received a shockwave from the courtyard as well as from the hallway. That's how the office ended up with such massive damage. After the war, Vice Principal Hideo Arakawa recorded damage from the atomic blast at the school. Critically injured, he was the sole survivor among those in the principal's office. Arakawa's notes describe what it was like being in the room. Mr. Kinoshita. Wounds on the back of his head. Glass shards embedded there. The principal was on the floor, face down, under a massive square timber, lying across his neck and lower back. He'd been crushed to death under the rubble of partition walls and shelves smashed by the blast. Ms. Ogawara was also crushed. She was grasping the hem of the principal's trousers, calling for help when she died. Later, when someone tried to unclench her tight grip, the skin of the palm stuck to the hem and her hand couldn't be removed. By hitting a sturdy building, the shockwave set off a series of complicated repercussions, wreaking havoc on every inch inside. Teachers in the middle of a meeting to prepare for air raids. Young women mobilized from around the Kyushu region to work at an arms factory. there would be no escape for them. Hiroko Kaneya survived the bombing that day because she was in an air raid shelter on the school grounds. Assigned to the Mitsubishi Arms Factory, she worked on the third floor of the South Wing. Kaneya was among four accountants, fresh out of high school, who worked side by side. There were four of us. I was here. And this was Nakamura. 
Glass windows were on this side. We were facing the sports ground. Here were my colleagues, mobilized from Kagoshima, Sanai Oku and Nomoto, sitting together. Everyone was nice and cooperative. When we were lagging behind on the job, my senior colleagues, who had already finished up, would offer to help. We were newcomers, you know. I always thought to myself how lucky I was to have such good co-workers. That day, Kanaya was on a shift to dig an air raid shelter starting at 11 in the morning. Just a few minutes before the bomb was dropped, she left her office for the digging site. Then, at 11.02, Nakamura had shattered glass stuck all over her body. I said, oh no, that must hurt so much. She said something like, I feel numb beyond pain. Nomoto too. I told her, your eyeballs are sticking out a bit. Are you all right? Can you see? She said, no, not really. Your face looks blurry. I can see only half of it. Her eyeballs were protruding by about two centimeters. I'd never seen anything like that. Badly wounded by the blast, Nakamura and Nomoto ran from the building. They both died later. Their other colleague, Sanae Oku, was nowhere to be found. Black Circle Number 63 The report that turned up in the United States explains how Oku died. She was killed instantly by the blast. Kanaya survived only because she happened to be away from her office. She often thinks about that day. She wonders why she's the only one who made it. On the ninth of every month, children at Shiroyama Elementary School offer prayers in front of the preserved building. What happened on that day? The children listen closely to the survivors' accounts. In July 2014, a relative of an A-bomb victim came to visit the school for the first time. She's a younger sister of Sanae Oku, who was killed here. Oku's sister and other relatives in Kagoshima do not have any of her ashes. The sister was notified after the war that Sanae had died on assignment in Nagasaki, but she didn't know exactly where until this year. Hello. 
Greeting the bereaved relatives is Hiroko Kanaya, who worked side by side with Oku. Today, she meets Oku's sister for the first time in person. Almost seven decades ago, Kanaya stood in this same schoolyard and could only helplessly look up at the third floor where Oku was. She told Oku's sister what she heard from her colleague about Oku on that day. Kanaya says Oku would always smile as she talked. Oku told her, when the war's over, come and visit me in my hometown of Kagoshima. But now, Oku's sister could only take some schoolyard soil back to her home as a memento. The families of the 138 victims were not even notified of their deaths. The dead were just listed as symbols and numbers in a report used by the United States. The Mokstam, the shockwave that killed tens of thousands and destroyed the city of Nagasaki, turned out to have been methodically calculated. Almost 70 years later, this wartime school building serves as a silent reminder of that day. <laughs>